There are over 54 rides at the Orlando Disney World parks, and plenty of people have ranked these rides based off of personal preference. But I'm not interested in personal preference. I'm interested in cold, hard facts. I have developed the only system for ranking the Disney rides that is completely unbiased, completely empirical, and completely superficial. This system will give us a ranking from worst to best of every Disney ride that everyone can agree with. Whether or not there is a dog. I could sit here all day and tell you how much I love Star Tours, but is there a dog in it? No, bottom of the list. Or when there is a dog, how many and of what quality? This is what we're tackling today. And by the end of this video, we will have a definitive list on which Disney rides you should always skip and which rides you cannot miss. Provided that you're going to Disney for a purely dog-based experience. Let's get started! First, I want to do a little honorary mention shout out to the character meet and greets that I'm not including on this list. Just because Disney can give you a fast pass for it does not make it a ride. Doug, my main man, if you wanted to make it onto this list, you should have given me a piggyback ride. Another notable exclusion from this list is Splash Mountain, which is currently defunct and thus doesn't count. If it did count, there are no dogs on it. I checked. Kicking off the list in last place, in a joint 60th through 32nd, we have a very long list that I'm not going to memorize to read off. The Tiki Room, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, Mission Space, Remy's Rat Adventure, The Seas with Nemo, Test Track, Star Tours, Rise of the Resistance, Smuggler's Run, Rock and Roller Coaster, Dinosaur, It's Tough to Be a Bug, Avatar, Flight of Passage, Cosmic Rewind, Frozen Ever After, Grand Fiesta Tour, Soarin' Around the World, Lightning McQueen's Race Academy, The Jungle Cruise, Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor, Wildlife Express Train, Under the Sea, Tower of Terror, Journey into Imagination, Navi River Journey, Tron Light Cycle Run, Kali River Rapids, and American Adventure, which, full disclosure, I barely even skimmed if there is a dog in American Adventure. Don't tell me. I simply don't want to know. <sighs> you heard that right. Over half of the Disney rides have no dog representation whatsoever. And if you're as outraged at that as I am, then I recommend that you reach out to your local politicians and demand that they stop taking away LGBTQ plus rights. And then after that, see if they can do something about getting Disney to put like Cosmo into Cosmic Rewind or something. Next, in another tie, we have 31st through 22nd, which is another long list that I'm going to read now. Astro Orbiters, Big Thunder Mountain, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Mad Tea Party, Aladdin's Magic Carpets, Tomorrowland Speedway, Prince Charming's Carousel, Alien Swirling Saucers, Expedition Everest, and Triceratops Spin. Now. I know that you've done as much research into this topic as I have before even clicking on this video. Obviously, it's a very normal thing to research. So you know that all of these rides also don't have any dogs in them, so why do they have a special place above the others? It's because these rides have a section that is outside where you can see the path from the ride. This means that while you're on the ride, it is possible that you might be looking out onto the path and somebody with a service dog might be walking by. And in that situation, you will have seen a dog while on these rides. It's not a guarantee, but it's not necessarily guaranteed that you won't. It's Schrodinger's dog. There is and is not a dog on the ride, and you don't know until there is or is not a dog on the ride. They get the special title of not last because there is a possibility of a dog. All right, time to get to the ones that actually have dogs on them. You might be realizing that this list is much shorter than advertised. In last place, but still having a dog in it, is the Barnstormer. Yes, this ride is all about Goofy a dog flying a plane, but when you approach the ride, you can see Goofy on the marquee, you can see these 2D advertisements with Goofy in it, and that huge billboard for Goofy's flying school that you crash through. All of those things you can see when you're not even in the line for the ride. When you're actually on the ride, the only evidence of Goofy that you see is his outline as he's crashed through things. But the outline of a dog is explicitly the lack of a dog. So while there are three distinct features of dogs involved with this ride, none of them require the ride. Next up in 20th place in a similar boat as the Barnstormer, we have Toy Story Midway Mania. There's a 2D slinky dog in the line featured here, which you could see if you entered the line, saw the slinky dog and exited. And there's also a slinky dog that is 
more clearly visible from the line than it is on the ride. Which, once again, you could see and then exit the ride and then you wouldn't need the ride. You can technically see it on the ride, but you need to be leaving from a certain station and facing forwards. Which, if you're familiar with Midway Mania, is not always likely. Disney, what are you doing? When are you going to give Slinky Dog the love he deserves? Two 2D props that you don't even need the ride to see? <laughs> Low points. In 19th place, we have Muppet Vision 3D. You might be surprised to find out that Ralph is not in the entire show portion of this ride. The only dog is Ralph on this poster in the exit path of the ride. So it's still a 2D dog, but you have to go on the ride to get to this area, which means it's more part of the experience than the Slinky Dog one. In 18th place, we have the Hall of Presidents with this dog. That's right. This is the best picture I could get from a ride video. It's also the only video of this ride that I saw that even glances past this picture. So I sent this off to the lab and had them enhance it and they went, whoa! Jesus. Well, that won't do. So instead, we found the original source picture and it's Bill Clinton with his dog, Buddy. Major dog points here for Buddy for being a real dog. And at one point, the most powerful dog on the planet. He was an easy pick for the best 2D off-ride dog. In 17th place, we have Space Mountain. That's right, Space Mountain's on this list. I bet you didn't expect that, considering Space Mountain takes place in the vacuum of space. In the exit path, before you get back to reality, you pass by these dioramas of future travel or something, and one of them has this cute little robo-dog. It wins against the other off-ride dogs because it's the only one to have a third dimension in its category. Now we get to the part but the dogs are actually on the ride. In 16th place, what's that? Late edition, new information just coming in? 16th place is Spaceship Earth. <laughs> I've already edited this video three times, but now I know that there's a dog on Spaceship Earth. Sometimes. At the end of Spaceship Earth, there's a segment called Welcome to Your Future, where your photo gets added into this little 2D animation talking about what amazing future technology there may be. And in one of them, they talk about automating taking care of your dog. Even more new information just coming in, there's also this robot dog in one of the other endings. This robo dog saved somebody in a skiing accident. Sounds perfect for me, I can't believe I didn't know about this dog. So by my research, and it may not be true, there are four possible endings and there are dogs in two of them. And to get those endings, you also answer like little, little questions. So it's possible to manipulate it to guarantee a dog. So I'm giving it a 0.7. Not guaranteed, but most of the time? No guaranteed dog, last play. In 15th place, we have the Country Bear Jamboree. Not just bears on the Country Bear Jamboree, there's also this little 2D backdrop that features a Dalmatian. Count it! But, ugh, what a weak inclusion of a dog. It's almost like the dog wasn't the important part in the Country Bear Jamboree. In 14th place, we have another surprise inclusion. Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. I did not expect there to be a dog on this ride because, say it with me, it takes place in the vacuum of space. But in the first scene, there's this cute little dog alien spaceship. Big points for being a part of the ride, but that Z emblem there, that means that this dog is a part of the evil Emperor Zerg's forces. Which means, and I hate to say this, we have a bad dog on our hands. In 13th place, we have the People Mover. And this one is a really interesting case because we've already talked about this dog. You can see the Robo Dog from Space Mountain's exit path while you're on the People Mover. So that's more dog points for actually being on the ride to see it. But those dog points are being split between two rides. So sadly, I can't rank it any higher than this. Coming in in 12th place is Peter Pan's Flight, which includes Nana in full 3D glory, though stationary. I want to talk about a good dog. I want to talk about number 11, Living with the Lands Dog. This is the dog that inspired this list. This dog really completes the cozy farmhouse feel and to top it off, he won't shut up. He's barking near constantly, and I love him for it. I do not envy the people who have to work at the garden grill immediately next to the show scene and probably hear this dog bark for their entire shift nonstop, but 
I don't work there, so he's a good boy. In 10th place, we have Mickey's Philhar Magic. When I last went on Mickey's Philhar Magic, there was no dog. But I watched a video to double check just in case I missed one. And in the new version, they have a scene from Coco heavily featuring Dante. Good for you, Dante. I'm so glad when a dog gets his day up on the big screen X many times a day. You did it. Good dog. We've officially moved past the rides with one dog on them. And we're now moving into the rides that have more than one dog on them. Sometimes one dog just isn't enough for a Disney ride, so if you want your most bark for buck, these are the rides to pay attention to. It's a top nine and not neatly a top 10 again, but please just bear with me. Just dog with me. In ninth place, we have the Disney World Railroad. This is an interesting case because much like the dog on the People Mover, I don't think most of these dogs were intended for the railroad. Maybe one was, but uh, you can see the backside of a fishing scene from another ride that we haven't talked about yet. There's a dog there that you can just get a quick glance at. Uh, you go through this Indian village, and I believe this little creature that people don't pay attention to in their ride POVs, I believe that's a dog. And you can also see the Barnstormer from the ride. So there's between one to three dogs on here, but none of them are like dedicated to the railroad, so I can't put this any higher. In eighth place, we have It's a Small World, after all. Have you ever ridden It's a Small World looking for a very specific detail? Maybe you have, but it's a lot like Where's Waldo? And fortunately, I'm very good at Where's Waldo, but it's still hard to discern through the videos. I know that we definitely have one dog here. We have this dancing poodle. That is definitely a poodle and it is definitely dancing. We also have this creature playing in the mariachi band that I'm pretty sure is the blue dog, you know, from art. And around this corner, once again, not featured in a lot of videos, is this thing standing next to a guy with a boomerang and I'm pretty sure it's a dingo, which counts as a dog. So I, there's definitely a poodle and I think there are also two other dogs. So one to three, we'll average it out to two dogs. In seventh place, and this is another late addition because I'll be honest, I didn't know anything about this ride before learning that there was a dog on it. We have the Liberty Street River Boats with three dogs. We have three dedicated, if slightly shared with the railroad, animatronic dogs. There's this very good boy who watches the fish jump out of the water on this scene. And there are two featured in the Indian village scene. One up front by the water and one way in the back who I think is howling. I've never personally ridden this ride. And now that I know that there are dogs on it, I gotta go back to Disney right now and get my butt on it. That's the power of this list. In sixth place, we have Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. This ride has Pluto and Goofy both in the pre-show and also on the ride for a dog count of four. And heck, it's worth something that this whole ride wouldn't even happen if it weren't for Goofy. That's an important dog. This used to be higher on the list because I counted Pete as a dog too, but I just learned the last time I watched a Goofy movie that apparently Pete's a cat. He looks like a dog. That would have been pretty embarrassing if I didn't catch that. All the Pete stands out there would have been coming for me. Unfair dog representation when it should be a cat. If you ever see me moving my hands down here, it's because there's a cat down here and I'm incapable of not petting the cat on my lap. Kicking off the top five, our highest rated dogs at Disney World is Pirates of the Caribbean. There are three animatronics of dogs in here and two of them are so, so very good. My personal favorite is this one that sings along to Yo-Ho A Pirate's Life For Me. So cute. But, and this is controversial, the most famous of the Disney dogs, the dog that has a movie adaptation of it is what brings this ride down. This is a very cute and very iconic dog, but I have to ding it points because a cab applies to this dog. This dog is participating in an unjust prison system, keeping these people in jail for, for what? Being a pirate? Um, it's called Pirates of the Caribbean for a reason. These people are supposed to be here. This dog is being a villain and I won't stand for that. Next up in fourth place we have a great big beautiful tomorrow with the Carousel of Progress. 
There's a Rover the dog animatronic in every scene of the show. All four scenes have Rover moving, barking, and being on stage the entire time. This is the Rover the dog show and you can't convince me otherwise. Rover is a particularly good dog because he is immortal and has lived for a hundred years? That's a powerful dog, and honestly, I'm really surprised that there wasn't a Rover cameo in Tomorrowland. Ow! Okay, Machka, I'll talk about cats next, okay? I'll talk about cats next. I know, guy, I know. Oh, I know, you're just so desperate for attention. I'm down here and I'm not even petting you. Taking the bronze medal, and this might be surprising, is the Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion, as you know it, has two dogs in it. There's one here with the groundskeeper, and there's one, like, spooky ooky dog back there. I don't really know what his deal is. So why does that have a quantity score of six? Because of the holiday overlay that makes it Nightmare Before Christmas themed. There are four distinct uses of Zero. They love Zero in the holiday overlay. My favorite Zero is him replacing the candlestick in the floating hallway. Now that I've seen the holiday overlay of the Haunted Mansion, I can't even believe that we still have the original Haunted Mansion. This overlay is really in-depth, considering that they only put it out like one month out of the year or something. Is it fair that I'm rewarding this ride for dogs that are only there a small amount of the time? Maybe not, but it's just so heavily featured that I feel like it has to be rewarded. In second place, we have Slinky Dog Dash. I have complicated feelings about Slinky Dog Dash. And by complicated feelings, I mean that's just what I say when I mean that I don't like something. But that does not change the fact that there are at least 10 instances of Slinky Dog in the line alone. And four trains all themed to Slinky Dog 2 for a dog count of 14. I love Toy Story, I love Slinky Dog, and the entire ride is a dog. How is this not first? Well, as unbiased as the system is, it's still my list and I get to pick what I want and I hate Slinky Dog Dash. It doesn't make sense that I hate Slinky Dog Dash, but I do and it doesn't deserve it. It's just that I look at this ride and it looks amazing. It looks like it's going to be my favorite ride in the park. It has the intimate style track design. It's got two launches, but when you get on it, you discover that it is the most disappointing ride ever. This ride isn't a baby ride for babies. This is an infant ride for infants. I wanted an outdoor rock and roller coaster focused on airtime, focusing on Toy Story, and I got a bigger barnstormer. And I can't reconcile that in my brain. So while the trains are great, technically you only experience one per ride, and the line is filled with slinky dogs, but they're all 2D, you know? You'll, it'll all make sense once I tell you what number one is. I think you're gonna get it. In first place, we have Kilimanjaro Safari. And you want to keep an eye out for the painted dogs. In this one video I found, they were six painted dogs out at once. Not only is that a lot of dogs, but it is also the highest quality of dogs because these are real life dogs living their real life lives in real life Disney that you can see with your real life eyes. How you feel about that is up to you, but you can't argue that there is any higher quality dog at Disney. And I know Rover's great, but he can't beat the real thing. If you want to go to Disney and have the best dog-based experience, you can't miss seeing the painted dogs on the safari. There you have it. The ranking to end all rankings. Indisputable proof that Avatar Flood of Passage, Rise of the Resistance, Cosmic Rewind, the the other one, Tron Light Cycle Run, they're all trash. No dogs. Kilimanjaro Safari, Slinky Dog Dash, Haunted Mansion, and I, I guess Living with the Land was the only Epcot one. Those are the new e-ticket attractions. No, not e-ticket. I'm renaming it. They're D-ticket attractions. D for dog ticket attractions. I hope this video has been an eye-opening experience that allows you to let go of your petty personal preferences and just agree with me instead. Next, I'll have to do a ranking of all the cats in Disney World, but they have all those cats that catch all the mice at night. So there are, there are way more cats than there are dogs at Disney World.
One day I'll have to do Disneyland too, specifically so that I can give this animatronic of Cosmo the love it deserves. Disney, put Cosmo in Cosmic Rewind, what are you doing? Oh, maybe I should do a, a closeout. Uh, thank you for watching. I don't have a lot to say. If you haven't seen my Tron Light Cycle Run video, go check that out. It's 40 minutes long. Why is it that long? I thought it'd be funny. Uh, and, oh, hey, if you're not interested in Tron Light Cycle Run, I don't blame you. It's also about Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which is interesting, right? I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy came out. It's hip. It's happening. It's about Tron Light Cycle Run, though. Bye. See you next time.